Hi guys, this is George back here with another video and welcome to the first top 10 video of 2021 and this is my top 10 UK coasters. Now I'm not going to be doing uh, as many top 10s as I did last year because a, lot, a couple of them haven't changed at all and the ones that I am doing other than one or two of them are pretty similar. The one we're going to be doing today is pretty similar to last year so but this is going to be slightly updated but here we go let's get straight into it so then guys coming in at number 10 is storm chaser a mac rides family spinning coaster that opened at poltons park in 2021 so uh, this is a family coaster that's part of their brand new themed area for this year called Tornado Springs and it's a near clone of Sierra Sidewinder at Knott's Berry Farm. Now this, you may look at it and think, oh, that looks pretty tame. No, when you get on it, it is a pretty intense ride. One, dare I say, one of the most intense coasters in the UK. So it's, yeah, it's definitely a lot more than you think it's going to be. The lap bars on there are brilliant, the staff don't normally push down on them too tightly either. The theming is absolutely brilliant, it's got a really nice indoor queue line on there underneath Buffalo Falls. Theming around the ride and in the queue line is absolutely brilliant. I cannot fault this ride in any way. Very smooth, no Mac rides rattle to it. And yeah, very intense coaster, so in my opinion, one, one of the best family coasters out there in the world. Coming in at number nine, we have Oblivion, a B&M dive coaster that opened in 1998. And this was the original B&M dive coaster designed by John Wardley. So with this, it is mainly about the drop because after the drop, it's pretty much over. However, you do look at this thing and with the fact that Alton Towers can't build over the, tree line, over the trees, it doesn't look particularly tall. However, it does feature a 115 foot underground tunnel making this drop nearly 200 feet so you're looking at one of the biggest drops in the UK and of course you're plunging down straight underground into a massive pit which is what this ride is all about it's absolutely brilliant and with the fact that it's kind of random as well with the drop because you could be held over for one second or you could be held over for a few seconds you don't know until it's actually happening so that does build up tension more absolutely brilliant ride really smooth it's the fastest roller coaster at Alton Towers believe it or not and it's a really really good fun ride so despite its age and despite the, the, despite the fact that it's the original it is still a fantastic coaster and one of my favourites in the UK. So then guys, coming in at number 8, we have Nemesis Inferno at Thorpe Park, a B&M invert that opened in 2003. And from what I heard, a lot of people were going in with very high expectations for this because of the fact it had Nemesis in the name and of course there's a Nemesis to Alton Towers which everyone praises. And apparently a lot of people came off this thing disappointed. I first rode this in 2015 and I was really impressed with it. However, since then it has definitely got better. It's a very intense ride, one of the most intense roller coasters I've ridden, especially if you're towards the back. And yeah, it's really underrated in my opinion. I think it's a fantastic roller coaster. It's got a really nice pre-section where it drops you into the volcano. There's four inversions on this thing. Not the longest of roller coasters out there. However, it does have some nice theming around it, some nice plants around it that do make you feel like you are in the jungle, which is fantastic. Pretty intense coaster, especially if you're towards the back, as I said earlier. And ever since then, it has just been getting better and better the more I ride it. So Nemesis Inferno at Thorpe Park is certainly a brilliant roller coaster. So then guys, coming in at number seven, we have Nemesis at Alton Towers, the B&M invert that opened in 1994. And this roller coaster, yes, it's a great coaster. However, it is very overrated in my opinion. A lot of people praise it for being the best coaster in the UK or the best coaster at Towers, one of the best coasters in the UK. In my opinion, it's not as high as uh, some, I don't think it's as good as a lot of people say. I wouldn't even rank it in the top three or four in the park. To be honest, this is kind of mid-tier for me, uh, for the coasters at Alton Towers. 
So, it is a very intense ride. It's got four inversions. It's a decent track length to Nemesis, uh, similar track length to Nemesis Inferno. So it's not too long, but you will see that Nemesis and Nemesis Inferno have quite a few similarities in terms of inversions, similar length. However, the themes are very, very different. And I do really like the theme with Nemesis. Very intense coaster. However, it's not quite as intense as a lot of people say, in my opinion. There is a sign outside the ride that says it's the most intense coaster ever. I don't think it is, in my opinion. That sign is definitely outdated. But it is still a very enjoyable ride. Yes, it may be overhyped, but I do still think it's a fantastic roller coaster, and it is still one of my favourites in the UK. Coming in at number six, we have Galactica at Alton Towers, a B&M flying coaster that opened in 2002. And yes, believe it or not, I do prefer this to Nemesis, which is the other B&M in the area. And this was the original B&M flying coaster. This is an absolutely brilliant ride. I absolutely love flying coasters. I really like the feeling of flying on here. It's a bit of a shame about the theming, because with the fact that, I won't go too much into detail, but it was supposed to have more theming. I have explained why, in a vi uh, why it doesn't in a video before, uh, but I won't talk about that now. So it is a bit of a shame about the lack of theming. However, it did open as air in 2002. There was no theming on that. However, in 2016, it was rethemed to Galactica. They put a big portal uh, by the first drop and they also added VR to this. Uh, it, there's no longer VR on the ride. I believe that was taken off in 2019, 2019, 2020, around that kind of area. There's no VR on it anymore. But to be honest, that doesn't really matter anyway because I think it's better without the VR anyway. I rode it once with the VR. It was good, however, I do prefer it without the VR, just looking around you and looking downwards as you're flying around, and it's at flying around the paths. There's two inversions on this, and it is an absolutely brilliant roller coaster. And yes, I do prefer it to Nemesis. Coming in at number five. So I don't know if this is still going to be uh, in dates, to be honest, because my last ride I had on this was not enjoyable at all. However, other than that ride, it's absolutely amazing. And this is the Smiler at Alton Towers, a Gerslauer Infinity Coaster that opened in 2013. And this holds the record for the most inversions on any roller coaster in the world with an amazing 14 inversions. You've got one before the first lift hill, you've then got six uh, after the set after the first lift hill and before the second, and then after the second lift hill, you've got the final seven on there. Now, with the fact that it's a Gerslauer, it can be a bit of a hit or miss in terms of the smoothness. I've had very smooth rides on this before, but I've also had very rough rides on this before. The final three inversions, no matter what for me, are always uncomfortable. However, it is a fantastic roller coaster. The restraints can definitely do with some improvements. If this had lap bars, then it would make its way right up to maybe my second, third favourite in the country, maybe. But other than the restraints, it's a fantastic ride. Of course, it's got lots of technical issues. It, it does have a lot of technical issues, but it is a fantastic roller coaster and it's a record breaking ride. So if you've not yet ridden it, definitely recommend it. A fantastic coaster. Coming in at number four then, we have Stealth at Thorpe Park, an Intamin launch coaster that opened in 2006. And this is an absolutely incredible coaster. Now, just like with Oblivion, there is kind of one focus to this ride. Oblivion, the focus is the drop. Stealth, the focus is the launch. You're launched from zero to 80 miles per hour in about 1.9 seconds. The signs still say 2.5 seconds. However, I believe uh, some work was done a few years ago on the launch that did make it uh, to 1.9 seconds. So it's a very intense launch. You're looking at one of the most intense launches on any roller coaster in the world with this. And of course, it features a 205 foot tall top hat, making it the second tallest roller coaster in the UK for now. And other than the launch and the top hat, there's not too much to talk about with this coaster. You do get a decent pop of airtime at the top uh, if you're in the back row, and then you get a decent pop when you go into the brakes as well, with the fact that that's on an airtime hill. But it's an incredible roller coaster. A lot of people do praise it for being the best at Thorpe Park, or even the best in the UK. For me, it's not quite, I don't rank it quite as high as that, but it is still a fantastic roller coaster that I do really enjoy. And it's one of my most ridden coasters, if not my most ridden coaster, so. There we go, it is certainly a fantastic ride. It's just a shame it always has a massive queue for such a short ride. So then guys, coming in at number three, we have Wicker Man at Alton Towers, a GCI wooden coaster that opened in 2018. And this 
isn't so much about the coaster for me. The coaster's all right, however, it's the experience that really makes it for me. This is more of a family coaster. It's got a 1.2 metre height requirement. It is a family coaster. It doesn't have masses, massive heights or massive speeds. However, the 57 foot tall wicker man structure does look absolutely incredible and you'll pass through this structure three times during your ride. Originally it was designed to have it so the structure lit on fire every time you passed through it. That doesn't happen all the time unfortunately because well it's just a bit of an unreliable effect that there seems to be many of at Alton Towers but there we go. Most of my rides I have had it so it does light on fire. Unfortunately, despite the fact that it's not particularly old, it's still a pretty new coaster, it has started to get a little bit rough. The last ride I had on this was in 2020, October 2020. It was rough. It wasn't unbearable. It's still a very comfortable ride. It's not painful in any way, but it is very jolty. And of course, like with a wooden coaster, yeah, you may expect it to be a little bit rougher, but it is a little bit too rough considering its age. The theming around the ride is fantastic and the pre-show really does add that, that cherry on the cake for it as well. I really do enjoy the pre-show. It's a short pre-show, however it really does build up the anticipation of riding this. It's a fantastic coaster and I do really enjoy it. Coming in at number two we have the Swarm at Thorpe Park, a B&M wing coaster that opened in 2012 and this is still the most recent roller coaster to open at Thorpe Park, however we have got plans for the new one so let's hope they get approved. But in terms of the Swarm, I do really enjoy it, the drop is absolutely fantastic, this was the second wing coaster to open and it was the first one to feature the wing over drop. The drop is fantastic, I absolutely love that, it's my favourite part of the ride. There's a few other inversions on here as well. The theming is absolutely amazing throughout the ride. It's the best themed coaster at Thorpe Park, in my opinion. One of the best themed coasters in the UK. It's a really smooth ride as well. I did have a bit of a rough ride on it. Uh, I can't remember if it was the beginning of 2021 or the end of 2020, but I did have a bit of a rough ride on it uh, for one of my more recent ones. However, 99% of the time when you ride it, it is silky smooth. It's coming on 10 years old now and it is still running absolutely brilliantly. It's a short coaster, however it is absolutely fantastic. And it's even more fantastic on the rare occasion when it doesn't have a big queue. So, there we go, fantastic coaster. If you've not yet ridden it, definitely recommend it. Very, very enjoyable coaster and it was my favorite in the UK for nearly, in fact it was over three years. It was about three and a half years, so. There we go, it's a, it's a fantastic coaster. I do really enjoy it. So then guys, coming in at number one now, the coaster that stole the crown off uh, the swarm for my favorite coaster in the UK. And it is, of course, Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, a Mac Mega coaster that opened in 2018. 2018 was a very strong year for UK theme parks, especially Alton Towers, and of course Blackpool Pleasure Beach with their brand new double launch coaster, the first double launch coaster in the UK. And what a fantastic coaster this is. It's silky smooth, so, so smooth, apart from in the back row. If you ride in the back row, I have noticed there is a little bit of a Mac Rides rattle, but it's nothing unbearable and it won't take away from the ride experience at all. Now for 2021, they did add seat belts onto this. Normally it was just the lap bar. However, now it has the lap bar and a seat belt. So that does therefore slow the operations down a little bit. Operations on this have always been fantastic. However, it rarely want, runs on three trains anymore. It used to quite commonly run on three trains. It very rarely does now because of these seat belts. But in my opinion, it didn't take away from the ride experience too much. I rode it four times on my 2021 visit and I didn't really notice anything. It's still fantastic to be riding a coaster with inversions and the lap bar. This is a long coaster as well. It's a very long coaster, one of the longest in the UK. So that's definitely a good point. We don't really have many long coasters in this uh, country. And it interacts with lots of other roller coasters at the park as well. You'll get interactions with the big one, Steeplechase, and the Big Dipper as well. So it's really mixing new coasters with old coasters as well. And that's something I really like about this. You feel so free on it, some great airtime moments, a long coaster, 
theming could be better and the soundtrack is absolutely incredible. It's my favourite coaster in the UK. A lot of people do say it looks slow, but in my opinion, yes, it's not the fastest coaster in the world, but this ride isn't about the launches. It's about the other elements, the inversions, the smoothness, the interaction with the other rides, and it looks absolutely incredible at night as well. I've never seen it at night in person, but the amount of videos I've seen of it at night, it does look absolutely incredible. So if you've not yet ridden Icon, definitely recommend it. It's a long drive for me to get to Blackpool Pleasure Beach. You're looking at about five hours, but it's worth the drive just to get on Icon. It really is a fantastic coaster and my favorite in the UK. So then guys, that is now the end of this video here. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at George Kelly, follow me on Twitter at George Kelly and check out my other YouTube channel at Wealthy Eagle. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. Stay safe everyone and I will see you all later. Bye.